In this video, we're going to look at motion tracking in Avid Media Composer, specifically with the blur and mosaic or pixelate effect. All right, so we've already done one video on motion tracking where we overlaid this video onto an underlying video of a cell phone that was moving. And be sure to download the CNQ app to catch your shows on the go, only for Windows Phone. And everything in that video is applicable to this video and everything in this video will be applicable to motion tracking in general, not just with the blur effect and the mosaic effect, which is what we're going to be using, okay? But everything you learn here is applicable to tracking overall. So let's go ahead and get started here. On our first example, we have this web page. Maybe we're doing a tutorial or something, but you can see the web page starts scrolling and maybe we don't want to show all these pictures. Maybe we just want to show this middle picture. We don't want to show any of these other images. Very easy to do with either the blur or the mosaic. Let's, let's start off with blur and we'll drop it right on to our video clip, pop into effects mode. And as long as you watch the last video where I went over the blur and mosaic effect, you'll already know what we need to do here. So we'll choose our rectangle tool and let's start blurring out what we want to blur out. So we want that blurred out. Again, we can change the type of our blur here. That looks okay. And we'll choose it again here because we want to blur this picture. All right, that looks fine. We'll choose it again here and I can hold down control on my Windows, Command on Mac to zoom in here. And again on Windows, so Control Alt to move this over. Make sure we get this blurred out. Okay, looks good. Now though, whenever we scroll through or play, that's not gonna work. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the tracking. Zoom out. Now there's a few different ways we can start this out. Let me expand our tracking here. We can come here and enable tracking. And as you can see, no shape selected right now. So we could select a shape and enable tracking. Another thing we could have done would be not even select a shape. We could just open up our tracking and start adding trackers and then link that to our tracking data later. But what we'll do is select our shape. We have our tracker right there that opens up our tracking window for us. And what we want to do is track the motion of that web page scrolling through. But what do we track? Well, it can be anything. It doesn't even have to be the image that we are blurring. So we're blurring this image, this image, and this image. We can track those images, no problem. Or we can you know, track this one. We could track maybe this box here. Whatever is in high contrast to whatever is surrounding it. So Media Composer knows, hey, I need to pay attention to this. So what we're going to do, on the control, zoom in a little bit. We're going to track this image in here. Get our target box. That should be okay. Our search box. You don't want huge search boxes unless you need them. You know, just, just play around with it a little bit. You can always retrack, it's not a big deal. That looks pretty good. So we're just going to use one tracker. We could use two trackers. Let's, you know, let's go ahead and use two trackers. Why not? We'll track this image too while we're at it. Although I'm pretty certain we could get away with one tracker here, but this is okay. All right, open up our tracking window again. And we're going to use the correlation tracker. If you have large areas to search, you might want to try the fluid tracker, or if you're not getting good results with correlation, you might want to try out the fluid tracker or vice versa. As long as you watch that first video on motion tracking, you know, we can always add new trackers right here. We have a stretch points mode, which we don't really get into much. And we have the enable study guide, which we're not going to use. We have enable smoothing, which we probably won't use. I might show it off, but we have our tracker set up. So let's go ahead and start the tracking. You have to press this button first. So Media Composer will play through and you can see, yep, our icons, our little uh, targets are staying right with the image. That's good. And it's going to track this whole scene. Okay, and there it is. And we can see the tracking data right there. We can go to the effect results and it doesn't look that great right now, does it? <laughs> we have our two blurs down here and this blur is kind of skewed. Hmm, so what's going on? Well, we'll get to that in just a second. Let's, let's look at smoothing here. We'll just enable smoothing and you, you can see how that changes what's happening. Just put on smoothing on this one here. And it's on 50% here. So if we play through like that, you can see kind of jittering, maybe a little smoother, but smoothing, it, it can possibly offset the actual motion. You can always take this down to maybe like 2% or something like that, 2 or 2%, 5%, 10%. Okay, 
just keep that in mind. But what we're going to do is select this shape, come back into tracking here, and I'm going to turn off point B. Okay, so that way we're just using that one tracker we had. You can quickly see the huge difference that makes. If you don't need two trackers, don't use two trackers. If you just need one tracker, just use one tracker. You know, if something like this that's just going up and down, we don't really have to worry about like the perspective and things like that. So we'll just use the one tracker. But again, we scroll through. This one is tracking fine, but our other blurs are not tracking. Not a problem. Pop back in here, do the effect editor. Make sure we have our select tool selected. Click on our blur. Come to the tracking, turn it on, and no tracker is selected. That's why it's not tracking. So we'll click this button, and since we track two points, we have two trackers to choose from. Maybe I want to use the B tracker. Let's see how that looks on this one right here. Not too good. That tracker didn't do very well. That's not a problem. Pop back in, make sure we select it. Come to this track, and let's change the tracker to the one we know works. A. Awesome. Again, selection tool. Select our other blur, turn on tracking, go ahead and use point A. Okay, now when we play through, perfectly tracked, Control Shift F for full screen, play through, you can see, perfectly tracked. All right, all right, so here we are in a new video clip, and we have the same problem. We wanna blur out all of our data here, but we start scrolling right in the clip. Not a problem with motion tracking and with blur or mosaic. Again, we're going to use blur. I'll just pop it right on our clip, hop into effects mode. I'll hold down control on the keyboard so I can zoom in here a little bit. Control alt and move this around. Okay, now of course we have a few options here. First, we need to set up the effect, right? So we'll blur this out. Now, of course, we could just blur everything out. Not a problem, but maybe we don't want to, you know, blur everything. Maybe we just want to blur a few things. Again, not a problem, just resizing this. Say we want to blur just the name. You can get this as tight as you want or as loose as you want. And then we want to blur, go to the last name. And then we want to blur, say the email. And maybe the phone number. Okay, so that looks pretty good. We'll leave everything else viewable there. Of course, as soon as we start scrolling, we're going to see everything. Again, hop back into the effect editor here. Let me put this at the beginning of the clip and we'll hop right into motion tracking in this case. Now, what are we going to motion track <laughs> in this? Because we need something of high contrast. Can't really use this Avid because it's going out of frame. So that's gonna give me bad data. We might try tracking maybe one of these little red dots. Let me zoom out so I can see my tracker, which is right here. It's kind of hard to see on this white. I'll move it over, control, zoom in. We'll lock it right down on this red dot. I'm just sizing it down so I can actually see it. We'll try that. And we can add another tracker, but I'm not going to. So what we'll do is correlation tracker. All this is fine. Okay, so it's staying with us so far. We're zoomed in. Just scrolling back down. Hmm, it may have worked. Not quite sure yet. As you can see, the the, uh, the blur's off, but that's not a problem yet. Let's uh, hop over here to let's select this. Go to tracking, enable it, and make sure we have point A. Close this down. Let's see if it tracks. We scroll through, and it tracked pretty well, actually. As we hop in here to effects mode, open up our tracker, go to effect results. Again, this first name is the only blur that we have assigned the tracker. So it didn't do, you know, it didn't do too bad there. It looks all right. So what we could do then is just go through and select our other points here, our other blurs, select all of them, and I'll just assign them 
to the tracker. And there you go. Tracks pretty well. But what if we didn't have a successful track there? Okay, well that's again not a not a problem. Let's hop in here. I'm going to delete all that tracking information right there. We'll set up a new tracker. Maybe even two trackers. I don't think we need two trackers, but why not? We're going to track this button down here because that is really high contrast. Come down here, control will zoom in, zoom in, control alt, move around so we can actually see it. Again, we really do not need two trackers on this, but I'm going to track this button right here. Make sure it's getting them all the purple there. And we'll put the green over here. And we'll size down our search area. All right, now we can track this. Back up, we have two trackers set up. Correlation tracking, again, we could try fluid tracking, but correlation should work here. Go ahead and start tracking. Actually, before I do that, let me zoom out first. Come back in here to tracking. And we can actually just pick up where we left off there. And it looks okay, but we're losing a little bit of tracking right there on our A tracker. And then it scrolls back down. Okay, there we go. Again, we can go to effect results. Which we're not really gonna see anything right here. There's our tracking data. We can zoom in here and it's hard to see with this yellow, but you can actually move these tracks. You can see that our B tracker did really well, but our A tracker did not do well at all. We could come in here and, and uh, move things around a bit, just grabbing these points. Okay, so keep that in mind. Of course, we also have our smoothing that we could try. All right, but let's go ahead and see how this really did. And we'll back out a little bit here and move around. And we'll pop over to selection tool. We'll grab a blur, go to tracking, and try tracking A. So we'll just see this one here first. You can see, hopefully, you can see how that's jittering. That's not a good track. So we'll pop back in, select it, and let's put it on our B. Well, that works pretty well. So we'll do the same for all of these. Just move them to the B tracker. Okay, there we go. I'll hit Control Shift F, and we'll kind of step through this a bit, just using the left right key on my keyboard. Yep, that tracks pretty well. So that's just something to remember. If your first track didn't go well, although ours did with that little red dot, if it didn't go well, try try something else, like like something that have high contrast. So I'll just play through. You can see that tracks really well. We're hiding all the information we, we want to hide. No problem. Okay, let's get on to some more tracking. So here we have a scene from our fake commercial for our fake show, Cop Drama. Quick, get to the chopper. It's the meeting you've been waiting to see for the past five seasons. You took my wife. Underwater dog. And goats. There were there were goats there too for some reason. Is this right? Now I'm gonna take something of yours. Cop Thursdays on A Q R X K O N Q S I. We really need to shorten the name of this station already. This is ridiculous. Come on, this is the big reveal <laughs> of the villain. But maybe we don't want to actually show his face. We want to sort of just sort of show him. Like, see, there he is. But we we actually don't want to see his face. All right, not a problem. Not a problem with blur or mosaic and motion tracking. This time, let's put the effect above the track instead of on it. So I'll go ahead and mark an edit on our filler track there. And then I'll come down to the end and use my keyboard to get this exactly right. Hit B. In my case, it's B. That's the add edit button right here. You can always come to settings, keyboard, and come to your command palette. You can map those however you want on your keyboard. Mine's on B, my add edit button. Okay, this time, what do you say we use mosaics since we've already done blur twice. So we'll grab mosaic, pop it right on. This is going to be exactly the same as it was for the blur. Zoom out. So of course, the first thing we need to do is draw our shape and we'll use the oval tool that works. Just 
stretch this out to cover him up, hide his identity. I mean, I don't know. Maybe dogs are uh, really sensitive about privacy. I don't know. So there we go. We can always adjust this however we want, but I think that's pretty good there. All right. So now we'll go ahead and track this. If we just look at it now, it looks okay there, but the zoom in, you know, we can really kind of see them. So let's track it. Come in here and this time I'll select it and come to tracking. Just hit the activation button, pop this tracking window up for me. Now, what are we going to track here? Hmm, well, we can't track the collar because that's going out of frame. Maybe his nose? That's high contrast. What about we try his eyes? So I'm going to try his eyes. So I hit control and really zoom in here. Get his eyes. Those are kind of high contrast. We'll just make sure we get it there. And pull this down to around here. And I think I'm going to use two trackers actually. I'll just create a new tracker. Control Alt. Move over here. And we could actually use three trackers if we wanted to. Which, you know what? Why not? Why not? We can always disregard the data if we don't need it. We'll grab his nose. We'll try that. Just see what happens. Again, correlation tracker for this. That's probably what you'll use, at least on your first try. You can always try a fluid tracker. All right, let's just go ahead and I'll zoom out here so we can actually see this tracking. And let's go ahead and start the track. All right, so our trackers, are, all of them are actually doing pretty good. Okay, so now we've lost a little bit of tracker two. Okay, so we are done with the tracking there. We can see all the data. Go here to affect results. See how this does. Didn't do well at all, not with all the trackers, but that's, that's okay. We have the data that we can always uh, use and change around. Actually, it doesn't even look like we have a tracker assigned here. So let's go ahead and assign. There we go. We'll assign that tracker to point A for this effect. And now when we look at it, didn't work very well. Let's try because he's coming closer to the screen. So we used uh, two trackers there. So we can sort of get that perspective, select the effect and add point B. So that's both of his eyes. So now when we look at it, it scales up and we probably want to increase the uh, pixelation there so we don't see them so clearly pop back in here select the effect we can change this pixelate them out a little more what if we just add that third tracker for no reason you can see how that changes our results all right so keep in mind you can see how that really changes the results. Keep in mind if you're tracking things that are coming closer to the screen and like Z space, you'll probably need uh, two trackers. What if we turn off that tracker there? The second one, go to effect results so we can see it. That works okay. So that's why we tracked with three trackers. So I have options. I think I like point A and point B best. So I'll hit control shift F we'll full screen. And that does pretty well. Okay. So what do you say we go ahead and move on? Just remember that about using multiple trackers, uh, you know, because we have, we have our subject coming in closer and we want this to get larger. So we really need to use at least two trackers on that one. All right, let's go on to another example. All the tracking information that you're seeing here, this can be applied to more than just blur or mosaic. You can use it to add graphics. Like I could change out this license plate. But what we're going to do is just blur it out. Okay, so if we look at the clip, there's a camera shake right there. So what do you say we use? I guess I need to go over here to image, come here to blur. We're going to use blur. We'll drop it right on the clip this time. Pop in here to effects mode. Make sure that's selected. Okay. Control. Let's zoom in here. All right. And again, we need to draw our blur. Right over the license plate. Can adjust however we want. That's okay with me. Make sure here at the beginning. And we'll pull this over. Okay. 
Now we come here to tracking, or we could just come down and open up our tracker, but we'll, we'll do it this way here. And I'll have to zoom out a little bit. So I can actually see my tracker. Now, what are we going to track? This could actually be difficult. We could try tracking a light. We could try tracking maybe a mirror, which I think we'll actually try. Not sure if it's gonna work, but we can always try. If it doesn't work, we'll try something else. Just wanna do this so we can show you that you don't actually have to track uh, you know what your effect is applied to. It's applied to the license plate, but you can track other things. Okay, so we'll come in here to our tracker. Again, this will be correlation tracking. All of this is fine. Let's go ahead and start tracking. Let's see how it does. So it seems like it's doing okay. All right, let's go through the effect results. And our blur is a bit off, as you can see. Well, maybe we could try stretch point mode and stretch things out. We could come in here to the tracking data and try to adjust things manually if they're a little bit off. It's a little bit better, but it's still off. You know, we have things like smoothing we could try. It's actually not too bad, especially if we just made this a little bit bigger. It'll work okay. That would actually work okay. But what do you say we just delete that, all this information, and we're going to completely retrack it. Right here to the beginning. Adjust the size a little bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and just retrack it. I'll just grab my tracking window there. This time we'll actually track the license plate. Zoom in here. This might work a little bit better. Okay, let's try that. Zoom out. Turn that grid off. Get to our tracker. Turn off stress points. Correlation tracker, and we'll start tracking. Okay, go to the effect results. And you can see we have a huge swing there, but that's because if you remember, we actually just opened our tracking window. We haven't associated this with the tracking data. So come here to tracking and associate it with our tracking data. So now when we play through, look at that. Perfect track. Control shift F. I can step through here. Or I can just hit play. You can see it tracks perfectly. Okay, so let's go ahead and do more. Why not? Here we have an ambulance and we want to hide the location. So again, we'll use, we can use mosaic, but we'll use, we'll just use blur. All right, go and pop in here. I'm gonna come back to the first frame. And the first thing we need to do is draw this out. Now this is gonna be a little difficult because our perspective changes a little bit. I'm gonna make it a little larger. It's okay. We can always use our reshape tool here if you want to mess with things a little bit. All right. And then we might do a little feathering and adjust the parameters. Okay. Now, what are we going to track here? Well, this mirror, we could try the wheel. We could actually try that cross there. We could try the back wheel, a lot of options to choose from. So let's just start off here. Let's start enabling these trackers. Actually, I'm going to try three trackers. We're going to try, what do you say, this wheel. Control and zoom in here a little bit. Try tracking this wheel. Specifically the rim there a little bit. All right. Then we'll try tracking this cross here. We'll drag our tracker over here. And the other one will be on this back wheel. I'll zoom in. This red is a nice high contrast. So we'll try this. Get right in here in the red. Bring our search box way down. Try that. And then our other wheel. And get in here. Maybe around there or so. And then have it up a little bit more. 
Okay. And you know what? While we're here, let's just go ahead and do the mirror while we're at it. Let's see what happens. Okay. So we have all of our trackers set up. We can add more if we wanted, but I think four will be plenty for this. And then we start tracking. Again, we're going to use correlation tracker. We'll just start tracking. So we can see we've, we're already losing the wheel. We're losing the back wheel. Our cross is pretty good. And our mirror is actually doing better than I thought it would. But now we're starting to lose it a little bit. But we'll check out the data once it's done. So we've completely lost our tracker here on our cross. Okay, if we go to effect results, and you can see what's happening because we have four trackers, you can see how it's skewing our image for us. And you, by the way, you could use tracking like this to overlay a graphic with, with your, uh, instead of using like a blur, you could overlay a graphic. Let's go over here and start turning some of these off. You see, that's not going to work on its own. Pop on another tracker. Try another one. That one doesn't look too bad. So like that's not, it's not horrible, but I'd actually want to retract this using a few different settings. So I just get rid of these and I'll start creating new trackers here. Now I know I can get a good track on this cross. I'll just set it up a little bit differently. I'll put it around here. We'll have this box a little bit bigger. And pull it down just a bit. Okay. Then we'll need at least one more tracker here. And I'll add another tracker. We could try maybe this band here. Maybe we'll try this on the back. Try checking this. Okay. And I'll add one to this wheel again, this time a little bit larger. All right. So let's try this and see how this tracks. Go ahead and start the track. And we're going to lose our tracker on the back a little bit. That's not doing too bad. Cross is doing much better. All right. So that looks a lot better already. So if we go to the effect results, I'm not going to see anything because it's not associated. So pop in here. Let's go ahead and associate this with tracker one, tracker two, and tracker three. Then when we play through, it does pretty darn good. As you can see, it's, you know, it's scaling with the, uh, with the turn there at the change in our perspective. That's why we use more than just one tracker. You can see that's pretty much perfect. You can always go in and adjust things a bit if you want. So come here to tracking and maybe there's a bump here that I don't like. I could move these around a bit. If I wanted to, but they're actually pretty darn good. Another thing we could do would be, let's zoom out, would be coming here to our tracker. We could try smoothing. So let's see what happens when smoothing. That's way too much. Let's say 23, 23 and four. Just so you can see the, what happens. I don't think smoothing is really needed here, but it just smooths out the tracking a little bit. It looks pretty good with the smoothing on, but we don't really need it. All right, so that's more things to consider whenever you're tracking. And, you know, maybe we don't even need all three trackers. Look, I mean, you can see what happens if I just have, say, the, just the C tracker on there. And I play through. Let me change this to effect results. So with just C on there, it's kind of bouncing around. It's not quite right. So we'll turn on B. So we have C and B, go back to effect results. You see how it's skewing there a little too much without that, without that other tracking data. 
So I'll turn on all of them. Again, effect results. And it's a whole lot better. Of course, after that, we can maybe change our blur a little bit. But that's pretty good. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to a couple more examples. Okay, so here we have her looking down. Then she looks up. So we're going to have to use tracking for this blur or mosaic effect. This time, just for fun, let's mark an edit here. Mark an edit there. Instead of putting it right on the track. And what do you say we use mosaic? We've been using blur a lot, so we'll use mosaic. Come down here to the first frame. And we'll go ahead and draw out our image. We'll just use the oval tool. And we'll cover her face there. All right, so we don't want to see her face at all. And we can use the uh, reshape tool if we want. Change this around a little bit. But I think that's pretty good as it already is. All right, so let's go ahead and track this. Now, what are we going to track here? I mean, we have a white background. She's not moving her body at all. It's just her head. So let me, uh, might be able to, maybe her eye. No, because they're starting closed. Her nose, no, that's not high enough contrast. So what we'll try, if we look around the scene, look at her head, what she's wearing. She has a headband on, and that stays in frame. It has good motion, and has high contrast to the hair. So let's track the headband, and we'll probably only need one tracker here. All right, so let's go ahead and track this. We're tracking. Let's turn our tracker on there. And we'll grab our tracker here, kind of hard to see, but there it is. We'll zoom in. Make sure we're getting this headband here. All right, and we'll pull this search box down a little bit. I think this area here will be good because I think it's in frame the whole time. Okay. Let's go ahead and, and track this. We'll use correlation tracker and start searching. Yeah, it's tracking pretty well. Mm hmm. Okay, awesome. Effect results. Can't really see it because we're zoomed in so far. Let me zoom out. Let's just hop out of effects mode and just see how our tracking went. So here we go through. It's not too bad there. I'll make this a little bit larger. Okay. So I think that it will be okay. Let me hop in here. And let me hop in here. And I want to actually change some of this data. This needs to come in a bit. And you can you can move these around however you want. Hop back out. And effect results. And that should track with her pretty well. It's a little bit, comes over a little far here. Can we could try stretch points mode, maybe some smoothing. And I'll go back to the tracking data. And it shows me at the exact point that we're at here. You can see it's coming in too far. You can modify it like this. Or you can always retract, you know. Lots of things you can do. So I think that would be okay. Move it over a little bit. And that's pretty good. So that's another example of motion tracking with, in this case, mosaic or the pixelate effect. Let's go ahead and look at one last example. Okay, so in this scene here, we have a guy riding through. We're gonna pretend we can see his face. We have a guy in the background here that we're, we won't need motion tracking for him, but we want, to, we want to blur his face as well. So let's go ahead and set it up. How will we do this? Well, for the guy in the background, I want to use the mosaic effect, so I'm going to pop that right on our clip. But for this other guy, I think I want to use blur, although I could use pixelate. Maybe I will use pixelate in here. In fact, I think I will, although you know I don't have to. I could come in here and grab my blur pop that on top and then I could blur one guy and pixelate the other guy if I wanted to, but you know what? 
I think we'll just use mosaic for both of them. Let's go ahead and set this up. First thing we need to do is, of course, set this up. So we'll pixelate this fine fellow. Looks great. And then we'll pixelate this guy. Grab our tool. Draw our shape. All right. Looks all right. Of course, when we start to play through, it's not going to work for this guy. It works pretty well for this guy in the back since he's not really moving. Although we need to move that over a little bit, actually. We'll pop back in here. This needs to be over here and be a little bit larger. And that should be okay there. Okay, so our guy in the background, he's done, but our horse rider, we need to use tracking, of course. Of course, of course, a horse, right? <laughs> so what are we going to track here? Well, we have a few options. We could track maybe his head. We could track maybe the horse, and we could try these one at a time, or we could do them all at the same time. Maybe we'll just try one tracker for now. Let's go and set up our tracker. I'm gonna try tracking his head, because that's kind of high contrast. Let me try to grab his whole head. I'm gonna make this a little bigger than it probably needs to be. Okay. Zoom out. And once again, we'll use correlation tracker for this. And we'll just go ahead and start the track, see how it does. Looks like it's doing pretty well because he stays in frame the whole time. And that looks like really good data there. Going to our effect results. And you can see that's a pretty much a perfect track. I mean, I don't know how you can get any better than that. Back to our control shift F and you play through. You can see that our guy in the background, he's pixelated and not being tracked, nothing's moving. And then our guy here, our pixelation is tracking right along. All right, pretty cool. That's pretty much it, but we'll just show a couple more things here. So we've already tracked this here. We could. We could add another tracker now. We could completely remove this tracking data if we want. Maybe we want to try tracking uh, the horse's nose. We could do that. And I'm just showing you this to show you that, you know, you can you can try tracking one data point at first and then add another data point later on. No problem with that. Let me zoom out and we'll try tracking the horse's uh, hind quarters here. All right, that's pretty good. Pop in here, let me zoom out, and we can start tracking. Now I could use the fluid tracker, but I think this will be okay with correlation, so go ahead and start the track. Okay, so see our horse's nose went out of frame, that's why I'm doing this, and of course we lose all that tracking there, so effect results, you can see how our mosaic is starting to skew because of the different tracking points we're using here. We'll pop out here, make sure this is on B, make sure this is on C. So it's tracking pretty well actually, but it's, it's moving around a bit more than it needs to. And here we lose it because of our horse, because that tr that those tracking points are pushing back. So one way we could actually mess with this a little bit Let's pop in here, up into our tracking data, and we could uh, zoom in here. And we could actually, like we've done before, we could move these around a bit, stretch them out. But we actually don't need that many trackers for this simple action, okay? I'm just showing you, you can add trackers later on. You can manipulate your trackers and uh, you know change things around. Maybe we'll try some smoothing on this and this. And that might look okay, but really we had our track pretty good already. Come in here, tracking, turn off one point. So now we have two trackers and that looks pretty good. But again, kind of losing it right there. We don't need that many trackers for this one, but we have the data so we could always, so we could always use it or disregard it, or we could even use that tracker, you know, for something else. Maybe hop back in here, back in here. Okay, and turn off that tracker. Just use that one tracker, and then we should have perfect track. Yep, perfect tracking. 
and our guy back here is pixelated and not being tracked. All right. Okay, so with all of that information about tracking with Mosaic and Blur, and all of these examples, that should give you a pretty good grasp of tracking in Avid Media Composer, using Pixelate, using Blur, all the different things you can do with it, how easy it is to actually use, set up, how to track, all the different tracking options. And again, you know, we're, we're just using Blur and Mosaic here, but we could, you know, add a graphic just like we did in our first tracking video where we added this video over top of a cell phone. It's a great feature, tons of things you can do with it. You can get very creative with tracking an Avid Media Composer.